Hello there, my fellow brave guardsmen with a deaf wish, and welcome to the next episode in my Death Core of Krieg lore miniseries. Previously, we talked a bit about the Krieg regiments in general, as well as the origins of their culture and nigh-on suicidal tendencies on the field of battle. Today, I would like to bring to your attention the unique actual soldiers and specialists from a Death Corps regiment, as they are quite different from their usual Imperial Guard counterparts. There's actually a lot of lore on all of these, so in this video I will try to put together a comprehensive summary of sorts, and if you guys like it, I will either integrate the remaining stuff in future videos, or simply do a couple of extra episodes with just the guardsmen, engineers, quartermasters, and so on as a focus. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about the Kriegan soldiers, shall we? Krieg regiments operate under the standard and recognizable Imperial Guard command structure laid down by the Departamentum Unitorum, with some minor local variation in insignia and designation. One example of this is that infantry sergeants are known by the title Watchmaster, while the sergeants of the Death Rider companies are known as Ride Masters. The Death Corps Officer Death Corps officers, right up to the level of regimental command, typically lead and fight from the front. This is not so much a conscious decision as a simple expression of the Death Corps mentality, as every single Krieg guardsman expects to fight and die for the Emperor. To this end, officers commonly equip themselves for the front line with grenades, powerful sidearms, and either a chainsword or a power sword. Command squads wear their squad insignia, with a C for command, on their right shoulder. Officers' helmets typically bear an ornate Imperial Aquila. Unlike many other Imperial Guard regiments that draw their forces from worlds with a long-standing militarized culture, like the Mordians or the Vostroyans, Krieg itself has no standing aristocracy or hereditary officer class. Instead, its officers are drawn from the body of the rank and file. This means that the majority of the Death Corps officer cadre has been promoted through the ranks thanks to a mixture of ability, seniority, and often the dint of simple survival. As veterans of the Death Corps way of war, they have no regard for high casualties which often leads to morale problems when a senior Krieg officer has been placed in charge of a non-Krieg regiment in a wide theater of war. It is also a noticeable feature of Krieg officer battle dress that Krieg regiments do not issue medals or decorations. This is due to the fact that Krieg soldiers view such rewards as meaningless. Bravery is expected and commonplace, therefore Death Corps Godsmen are not recognized with special rewards. It is also noteworthy that up to regimental command level, Death Corps officers often favor the expediency of a numeral designation instead of their own name. As such, the officers are referred to as Major Alpha for a first company, Major Gamma for a third company, and even Colonel 186 for the commander of the 186th Regiment. The Death Corps Commissar Commissars are present in the Death Corps as mandated by the Departamento Munitorum Regulation, being the only non-Krieg natives to serve in the Death Corps. Due to the relatively low rates of infraction and morale problems among the Death Corps regiments, they find themselves often employed in reining in any excessive zeal on the part of the troops, and act as tactical advisors rather than enforcers of discipline. Commissars assigned to a Death Corps regiment are often well placed to become the voice of restraint for a Death Corps officer reinforcing the wider strategic goals of the war zone over the short-term victories through expenditure of men and material that might be needed later. In short, the Death Corps might be the only Imperial Guard regiment where the Guardsman executes the Commissar for cowardice. In theaters of war where Death Corps regiments must fight alongside other Imperial formations, Commissars attached to a Death Corps staff also find it prudent to act as a liaison between regimental commands where needed. 
as well as keeping a sharp eye that any acrimony between the Death Corps and other Imperial Guardsmen deployed in the same area does not become a problem. The Grenadier a Death Corps Grenadier is an elite soldier of the Death Corps of Krieg. Grenadiers are chosen from the ranks of standard Death Corps infantry squads, usually by their watchmaster or a commissar, and recommended for appointment as a Grenadier. They are also drawn from the veterans and survivors of decimated Death Corps squads and platoons. This is not a promotion, as Grenadiers still carry the same rank they held before appointment but they are regarded as having seniority over the rank-and-file guardsmen by dint of experience and veteran status. After serving with a grenadier squad for a time, Krieg guardsmen can be returned to service with the standard infantry as a watchmaster. Casualty rates among the grenadiers are very high, and although service in the heavy infantry is regarded as a privilege, it is also seen as a duty. A Krieg soldier appointed as a grenadier cannot refuse the honor, and adopts the skull face mask as a symbol of acceptance of his fate. Statistically, 8 out of 10 grenadiers are killed in action. The men behind the skull mask have accepted that they are essentially dead. To the men of the Death Corps of Krieg, grenadiers are those soldiers who have lived too long, and must now either prove themselves exceptional enough to warrant promotion to a command role, or finally find atonement for their people's sins against the Emperor. Grenadiers are principally used by the Death Corps regiments in a heavy infantry role as the leading edge of assault waves, that are intended to smash key enemy defense points during a wider infantry attack. Many Grenadiers consider themselves already martyred in the Emperor's service, and will not falter in their duty regardless of the odds arrayed against them. Breaking with conventional stormtrooper training, grenadiers are never deployed by grab shoot, and instead often carry the brunt of an initial advance on foot, or as small tactical units in rapid moving Centaur APCs. Grenadiers carry a high percentage of special arms, such as a flamer or melta gun, and will also employ relatively unorthodox weapons, such as a heavy flamer in two man teams. A grenadier squad may also carry an additional heavy stubber to increase their firepower. The Death Corps Engineer Like grenadiers, Death Corps engineers are infantrymen who support Krieg campaigns in a specialist role. The Engineer Corps provides expert knowledge, specializing in subterranean warfare, digging shafts, tunnels, and saps to undermine the enemy's strong points and launch surprise raids behind enemy lines. Krieg Engineer squads carry a lot of technical equipment, as well as the standard equipment that is used by those of their profession. As well as soldiers, they are miners digging forward from the front lines with deep shafts to bypass enemy defenses, set large explosive mines below positions, or dig sap trenches. Saps are shallow tunnels which are dug just below the surface, allowing a squad to blow an entrance to the surface and quickly assault an enemy position without crossing no man's land. Engineers are also trained and authorized to use chemical weapons, if required, they carry small gas canister grenades, which are used during assaults to shroud the enemy in highly corrosive gas. These are weapons of last resort, but have helped to give Krieg regiments a ruthless reputation. The Death Corps Watchmaster A Death Corps Watchmaster is the equivalent of a non-commissioned officer with the rank of sergeant in other guard regiments. Infantry platoons form the bulk of the Death Corps Siege Regiment's manpower. Each Siege Regiment consists of five companies, which are broken down into ten infantry platoons, and one heavy weapons platoon. Each company is led by a Death Corps captain, who is assisted by a veteran watchmaster. Each platoon consists of a command squad, and up to six infantry squads. These squads are led by the watchmasters, who act as squad leaders. The Watchmaster is assisted by an appointed senior guardsman, usually the longest serving one in the squad. Like their fellow guardsmen, Watchmasters have been indoctrinated from birth in the martial traditions of the Corps. 
They are highly proficient with all the basic weapons of the guard, and most especially with the bayonet, and do favor the bayonet charge in battle. They fearlessly lead their squads across no man's land to storm enemy trenches and defenses. Having no fear of death himself, a watchmaster demands and expects nothing less from their men. The Death Corps Guardsman Each Death Corps soldier is fully trained to the standards expected for combat readiness set down by the Departamento Munitorum with particular emphasis placed on hazardous environmental survival and endurance, physical and mental resilience. Proficient in the use of all basic Imperial Guard weaponry types, as well as the use of grenades and explosives, a Death Corps soldier is also proficient in rapid and skilled construction of trench works and defenses. They are also exemplary hand-to-hand -hand combatants, with bayonet drills being practiced from childhood. Accuracy is secondary in Death Corps weapons training to fire discipline, with the ability to maintain continuous fire on mass as part of an infantry formation considered to be of paramount importance. Death Corps guardsmen have a tendency to be highly insular, unemotional, and often taciturn to the point of silence outside of their duties. They also display a high degree of fatalism and an unusual morbidity of habit, such as carrying relics, ossuaries of bone, and other memento mori about their person. This is a form of religious observance, to honor those who have already fallen in the service of the God Emperor. The Death Rider Superficially similar to the standard Rough Rider cavalry units found among numerous other Imperial Guard regiments, the Death Riders of Krieg are one of the most justly famous of the unique formations found within the Krieg forces. The Death Riders of Krieg are also a direct result of Krieg's centuries-long civil war. Their most singular aspect is the nature of the Death Rider mounts, the legendary Krieg Steed, that is a highly adaptable form of the original Terran horse. This animal is now the product of extreme genetic engineering, tailored for strength, endurance, and aggression, with numerous additional biosculpted organs that allow them to survive unscathed in the most polluted and toxic battlefields. That grown on Krieg under the auspices of the Adeptus Mechanicus, the animals are further augmented with subdermal organic armor, osmotic lungs, and a fully integrated drug injection system rigged with a potent mixture of stimulants, pain blockers, and other palliatives. The end result is that the Krieg Steed is capable of incredible levels of endurance and environmental tolerance. The Death Corps Riders form a special cadre within the Krieg regiments, and their inductees are chosen not only on the grounds of aptitude, but also for independent thought and initiative. Many future Death Corps officers are drawn from the ranks of their survivors. Death Riders are equipped with a wide variety of sidearms and saber blades, in addition to the signature explosive-tipped lances found in similar units. The Death Corps Quartermaster Death Corps regiments feature a most unusual and unique position, that of the Quartermaster. These individuals have replaced the battlefield medics found in most other guard regiments. Their role has its roots in Krieg's own war-torn past. In that merciless civil conflict, the recovery of arms and war gear of the Fallen was of paramount importance, and field medicine and battlefield triage was a luxury that could seldom be afforded for the more seriously wounded. So it is that in Krieg's civil war, a soldier that could not be readily brought back to the fray, or at least retreat under his own power, was considered a liability. The only fate for such unfortunates was the so-called blessing of the Emperor's peace, which is fancy talk for a field execution. This onerous task, along with the recovery of a soldier's equipment, was the responsibility of the quartermaster cadre, and remains so in the present. Quartermasters are chosen from the ranks of the Death Corps by selection during training, particularly for their faith in the God Emperor, as well as their mental aptitude and occasionally from individuals who have survived against all odds. 
These individuals are given additional training in field medicine, basic tech lore, and even more indoctrination in Kriegan aspects of the Imperial cult. And this, my friends, has been a rough list of how the Death Corps fighting men are organized and what the responsibility of each are. Which of these ranks did you find more interesting? Which would you like to be part of if you were unlucky enough to serve in a Krieg regiment? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was enjoyable or informative to you, please consider clicking the like button and maybe subscribing for future content. If you'd like to give my channel a small helping hand and keep it afloat, please consider checking my Patreon page. The link is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a peaceful day. The Emperor Protects.